a lot of people think you can only get great Chinese food in a Chinese restaurant. That's not true. With the right ingredients and a few simple techniques, you can recreate all your favorite Chinese restaurant specialty right in your own kitchen. The first thing I'm going to show you is one of the most popular Chinese beef dish from northern part of China, Genghis Khan Mongolian beef. Uh, here, I have some beef. It's already marinated with soy sauce, cornstarch, tiny bit of wine, and also white pepper. Okay, and I've chopped some garlic, and I'm going to show you. We're going to get some red bell pepper because a good Chinese restaurant never show any of this white pack. So I kind of trim this like that. Now, this particular Mongolian beef dish is named after the name called the 12th century Mongol conqueror, Genghis Khan, who liked things wild and spicy. Okay. Set it aside and put it ah, right here. <laughs> and then you want to put it right there? Ah, you put it ah, right there. When this is all nice and done, you should marinate your beef for approximately anywhere from half an hour to two hours. If you have time, do it overnight. Then you heat up your nice wok, and then you get ready a tiny bit of cooking oil, and you get ready with this tiny bit of oil. Not much, about one to two teaspoons. Okay, look at that. Marvelous. Hot. Put a tiny bit of garlic, chopped garlic. Dry chili, a lot of them. Stir, wow, look at the toss them around. Get the flavor out. Then you put the beef, marinate it. Right in here, stir. Toss it. Don't just sit there and stare at your beef. Don't go like that. That is not stir fry. Toss, stir, stir fry. There's a major difference, as I always remind people. There's a major difference between stir-fry and stir-fry. <laughs> stir-fry will burn. Oh, look at that. And then you put the rest of the stuff in. A lot of green onion and red bell pepper. Look at that. This is all we need. We don't need this anymore. Continue to stir. Can you hear the sizzling sound, the excitement? Wow. Continue to stir until you're absolutely exhausted. <laughs> and you stop. Then you add the final touch. A tiny bit of chili oil. Just a few drops. This is enough. But you like hot? More. You want to smoke your hair? Huh? Even more. Tiny bit of sesame seed oil. Just a few drops of sesame seed oil. And hoisin sauce. Wow. H-O-I-S-I-N. It's from fermented soybean with garlic and everything. Put a tiny bit of soy sauce. Oh, look at that. Look at this. It's all nice and ready. You don't even have to thicken it up. If you want to make more sauce, all you have to do is to, oh, look at that. While I'm stir frying this, I am gonna quickly, I am gonna quickly deep fry the cellophane noodle because we're gonna use this to put in the bottom of a dish. Make sure the oil is hot enough. Test. Hot. Put it in. Ah, oh, please, uh, come up. I hope it is coming up slowly but surely. Look at that. Okay. When it's come up, you take it out. Look at that. When it come up, you take it out. Don't do it for too long. Then you can transfer these, put it right in the middle, right here. Oh, look at it, wow, hot. And then you transfer this beef right here. Very easy to do. Genghis Khan, Mongolian beef. That's all you have. Now, I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to show you to do another wonderful dish, okay? 
and I want to show you how fast and how easy it is to clean up your non-stick frying pan if you have one. All you have to do is clean it out <coughs> like that and you are ready to cook again, okay? <laughs> now, everybody know, have you ever wondered how one Chinese cook can prepare all the dishes at the same time? Chinese chef often have to juggle two sizzling hard work at the same time. I want to show you how I do it. I'm going to prepare two dishes simultaneously and finish everything at the same time. And I call this walk side by side, okay? <laughs> now, when this is hot enough, this is hot enough, we're going to get ready. I'm actually showing you how to do two dishes. One is this most popular restaurant dish called General Joe's Chicken. They normally deep fry this chicken after they marinate, but I want to make it a healthier version. I'm going to stir fry this. In this particular dish, I have the marinated chicken, 8 to 12 ounces. I have green onion, ginger, dried chili pepper, some peanut, because Chinese restaurant use a lot of peanut. Aside from using a lot of water, they use a lot of peanut too. This is the peanut from Texas, Texas peanut. And then also, we use a tiny bit of garlic. We're going to mince garlic and ginger and get ready. Look at that. Cut, cut, cut. Mince garlic and ginger. Mince garlic, look at this. One, done. <laughs> Mince ginger, done, done, done. You got to say done, done, done. Otherwise, it won't get done. And then when it's all ready, I'm going to set this aside and get ready. Because you know what? I'm going to get ready an other ingredient for the other dish. is called shrimp, saute shrimp with chili tomato sauce. Right here, I have all these ingredients. Look at that. I have shrimp, I have tomato sauce with a tiny bit of hoisin sauce mixed together, garlic, ginger, and some chopped or diced onion and some chili pepper. And I want to show you, I want everybody pay absolute attention. We have shrimp, we have chicken, we're going to do it, okay? We're going to do it side by side. Three, two, first, <laughs> add oil. Before you add oil, you cannot say three, two, one. Okay, this is getting more and more exciting. Do it all together. Now, everybody pay attention, okay? Garlic and ginger. Garlic. First is ginger, second is garlic. And then, this walk, we're going to do chicken. Toss, toss. And then this walk, we're going to do shrimp, which is already marinated with a tiny bit of salt and pepper and cornstarch. Oh. And then you come back here. <laughs> And then you come back here, and then you come, and you go, and you come again, and don't forget this. And then you put green onion, okay, dry chili pepper, and a touch of extra chili pepper. Very exciting. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And then this one, onion, dry chili pepper, and then we're going to put a tiny bit of wine. Look at that. Look at this. Wow! Amazing! Wow! Oh, amazing. Ah, no wonder my eyebrow is nothing left. And then, when this is nice and done, this is nice and done, we are going to add a tiny bit of tomato sauce. This is how fast this dish is. This whole dish is basically done. And then in the meantime, I put a tiny bit of sesame seed oil, a tiny bit of vinegar for the General Joe's chicken, a tiny bit of sugar, and a tiny bit of soy sauce. And then I'm going to use a tiny bit of chicken broth and a tiny bit of soy sauce. Again, dark soy this time, give it a nice, rich color. And then I am going to thicken this up with this cornstarch solution. Look at that. Look at this. This is so easy to do. Everybody can do it. And it's combined the sweet and sourness 
and the oh, all the things together. Look at that, and it's done, done, done. And the whole dish is done. Cook at the same time, done at the same time. Huh? When this is done, we'll put it over here. Oh, look at that. I want to show you. I am getting so excited. I have never, never get to be so fast. Here, you notice that in order to make this exciting, I'm going to cut up a teeny tiny bit of basil. You can use Thai basil, julian. Look at that. This way, I can use it to, as a garnish, okay? When the chicken is done, we put this right here. Look at how beautiful. Without deep frying. And then, for the shrimp, we put it right here. And then, in order to make it more interesting, I am going to sprinkle some Thai basil. And before you do anything, I'm going to add some peanut. Now, a lot of people don't realize that you, this country is one of the major producers of peanut. All you have to do is roast it, dry roast it. And Texas is the second largest peanut producing state in the U.S. A lot of people don't realize that peanut and peanut butter are packed with a wonderful protein. In fact, each year in this country, we eat enough peanut butter and have enough to cover the entire Grand Canyon. <laughs> and peanut is also a great source of protein, fiber, and B vitamins. So also very low in saturated fat. So now we have General Joe's chicken with peanut from Texas. And also we have sauteed shrimp with chili tomato sauce. You see, I am still overwhelmed by the two dishes and all the frames that come out. Fortunately, this is still around. Not all restaurant dishes are so quick and easy to prepare. In fact, for one dish that the kitchen needs about 24 hours notice, like the Peking duck. So let us take a look at how they serve this particular duck at the famous, famous King Hung restaurant in Hong Kong. Peking is famous for two things. Peking man, which is now all bones and Peking duck, which is a lot more delicious. Some say that Peking duck is all skin. Well, not quite. But you need to carve the skin neatly because it is an important part of the dish. By the way, the gloves are optional. The proper way to serve Peking duck is to serve it inside a freshly steamed mandarin pancake. Add a little hoisin sauce and some green onion and we end up with the best roast duck sandwich in the world. And now comes the best part. In China, Peking duck is actually three dishes in one. You have the duck sandwich, a stir fry dish with duck meat, and a soup made from the duck carcass. Nothing is ever wasted. In Hong Kong, you might pay about $35 to $40 US for Peking duck. But it is still a great bargain. You know why? Because it's three dishes in one. It's a whole meal. They serve the crispy skin with a tiny bit of meat with a moist, tender, wonderful, thin mandarin pancake. And then they stir fry a dish with the remaining meat. And of course, using the carcass to make a soup is three in one.
The next thing I want to show you is something exciting. Now, this is the most famous Chinese restaurant specialty of all time, wontons. You have probably ordered fry wonton in wonton soup, but I'm going to make something a little bit different. The Chinese answer to Italian ravioli. <laughs> Here, I'm going to show you how easy it is. Normally, when you go out to have wonton, most of the time, the meat is normally ground pork, OK? But here is the seafood wonton. Look at all the ingredients that I have. I have fresh water chestnut, green onion, oh, beautiful, tiger prawn, fresh, frozen. And also have firm white fish, or you can use filet, you can use all kinds of fish, whatever you like. Mince them all together, chop up with some cilantro. I have this wonderful feeling, OK? And when I get this ready, the next thing I want to show you is how to fold the wonton. There are a lot of ways to fold one ton. Not all the techniques are created equal. Ah, also, I want to show you a couple of one that I like to do. Here, this is the typical one ton wrapper. They're normally squares, squares like this, okay? Here, I use a little spoon, get some water right here, scoop out approximately half a teaspoon. If you are not very hungry, half a teaspoon. And then all you have to do is put a tiny bit of water on the other side, on this, both of these sides. Then you fold it into a triangle like that. Look at that. And then you pick this up and put a little water at the tip of one end. And this is one of the most popular way to fold one ton. Look at that, slow motion, just like I'm practicing my Tai Chi. Slow motion. And I'm gonna put this very slowly from here to uh, right here. <laughs> and then I put this, I'll show you another one. Very easy to do. This one, I'm going to do it as, this is for the diet conscious, okay? A little bit of meat, fold it in like that, instead of go all the way, just like that, and still do the same thing. This type of style is very good for deep fry one ton, because when you deep fry it, it's a lot of dough. Look, and look, 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 see the difference. This is a diet conscious, this is, they, you don't care. <laughs> and if you have not eaten one ton for four and a half years, and you use uh, this much, this one of these will be enough for you that you don't have to have three meals in the next three days. One, this is three times as much, okay? Once again, fold this in. Now this time I want to show you another technique. You don't have to fold it like that. You can just simply fold it this way, just like a head. You fold it this way. Look at that. So you can have all kind of ways. I'll show you another way. Ah, this is how they do pot sticker and a variety of Chinese dumpling. This is the round one, and I put this right here, right in the middle. So you have all kind of way to do it. That's the way. In the meantime, you know what I'm doing? I'm boiling some water to cook my one ton. Then we can also get up the wok and get the stir fry going. Look at that. This is a very unique way. I want everybody to pay attention, okay? Look at that. You fold into it like this, and you close this, and then you pleat this, just like a ha gao siu ma and pa sticker. You pleat this, and you pleat this, and you pleat this, and you pleat it. You continue to pleat, you continue to pleat, you continue to pleat, you continue, until you have nothing to pleat, you stop, and then you have this like a little pot sticker looks like this. So that means you can do anything you want. Different style, different way. When it's all nice and done, we're gonna set this aside and get everything ready. I have some extra one ton here, extra one ton here. And we are gonna boil this right over here. First, we bring this to a big boil and I use my chopstick again to push this in. Look at that. Make sure it's boiling, okay? If it's not boiling, it is no good. Pour it in, stir, stir the whole thing. Make sure, you know what? You can actually do this one ton ahead of time and you just freeze them individually. That means you can do everything in the last minute, okay? Stir it a little bit and bring this to a boil. While you're bringing, the, bringing this to a boil, you get this wok ready. You're gonna stir fry some of these vegetables because we are going to get all of these ready. Here, I have some shallot, I have some baby corn, snow pea, carrot, and straw mushroom. Wonderful straw mushroom. Sometimes you can buy it fresh, but most of the time you buy it in a can. And then you go. <laughs> da 
done. You notice that I look at what I do. I look at here, I look at there, I look at there. Ah, oh, it's done. When it's all nice and done, you're gonna cook these. Now, I wanna show you how to use a chopstick to stir fry. A lot of people don't realize chopstick is not only used in the dining table, but also as a cooking chopstick. When this is nice and ready, you put all these vegetables right here. Look at that, stir fry. Look at this, isn't it interesting? Season it with soy sauce, with chicken broth, with sesame seed oil. A lot of people probably don't realize chopsticks have a lot of history. Confucius said, one said, an honorable man allows no knife in his table. As a vegetarian, he believed that tools that kills anything's metal or sharp, there's no place in the dining room, not even metal chopstick. When this is nice and done, we're gonna pull the one ton right out of here. Seafood one ton. Look at that, isn't that marvelous? And then I put it right into this stir fry. Stir fry one ton. And then I thicken this with a tiny bit of cornstarch. And then you have ready some wonderful dish, stir. This is whole thing is done, and you serve these right here. It is so colorful. This seafood wonton ravioli don't even have to be garnished. Look at a very unique dish being created right in front of your very own eye. After a big meal like this, you need a light dessert. Well, we have heard from Genghis Khan and General Joe. And how about word from General Custer? <laughs> Here, let me show you a light steamed custard with candy ginger. This is what you have. I have a ginger infused water sweetened with sugar. And I also add about three or four egg white bitten. And also non-fat milk right in this wonderful container. Then I put this right here, filled it up, filled it up, a very, very famous dish in many Cantonese style restaurants. And this is actually one of my favorite when I go out to eat as a, for desserts. It's very easy to do. Once you do that, you can sprinkle and julienne some candy ginger. Okay, and then you can sprinkle this inside here sprinkle the candy ginger, and you're gonna steam this, put this right in here in this steamer and steam it. But we always have something ready for you. So we are gonna take this out from here, and it's nice and hot. We're gonna take this out. <laughs> hot. And then, of course, you can garnish with some extra, gin, uh, extra candy ginger and a tiny bit of mint. Now, you know what? Custard. Last stem, light and refreshing, with no cholesterol, very little cholesterol. Skin custard with candy ginger. Look at that, beautiful. Now that you have seen a little of the behind the scene technique that go into making your favorite Chinese restaurant dishes, hope you will be inspired to put them on the menu at the finest restaurant in town, House of You. Till next time, be your own best chef, and remember, if Yen can cook, so can you. Zhai Jian. <laughs>